I am a Canadian, a Japanese, an Indian, and I see the world from these lens. Sometimes when we examine our faiths, I'm a Muslim, I'm Christian, I'm Jewish, and I see others from this lens. I'm a Protestant, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Sunni, I'm a Shia. And then we have all these other identities. I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm an engineer, I'm a liberal, I'm a conservative, I'm black, I'm white. You see how many identities intersect and people see others based on these identities. What I find inspiring in the legacy of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that he broke these barriers and he allowed his community to see the world from the lens of one identity, and that was humanity. To see others as fellow human beings. The Prophet Muhammad came in 7th century Arabia. In the Arabian Peninsula, Arabs had this rigid tribal mentality. If you're not from my tribe, if you don't worship what I worship, you're not fully human. And they would dehumanize others. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught them that every person that you come into contact with is a human being. Don't dehumanize others. Because the minute I allow myself to dehumanize others, that's when crimes happen. That's when genocide happens. That's when injustice happens. I would like to share with you a few examples from the life of the Prophet Muhammad to see how he saw the world from the lens of humanity. One day the Prophet Muhammad was sitting amongst his companions. When there was this funeral procession in the street, people were carrying a coffin and participating in a funeral. When they passed by the Prophet Muhammad, he stood up. His companions told him, why did you stand up? This deceased who is in the coffin is a Jewish man. He's not Muslim. Why did you stand up? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with so much respect for that dead body, he asked them one question. He told them, isn't he a human being? Isn't he a soul? And this was a beautiful lesson that he was, he was teaching his community. He does not have to be Muslim for me to respect him. He's a human being and I will stand up and respect that coffin. This is the tradition that we find the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, upholding in that part of the world. In the neighborhood where the Prophet Muhammad lived in Medina, there was this man who would give him some trouble. Every once in a while, he would take his trash and he would throw it in front of Muhammad's door and house. Now he came from a Jewish tribe and there was some misunderstandings. They did not understand what the message of Prophet Muhammad is. He had just came to Medina. So every single day he would come and throw that trash. One day the Prophet Muhammad leaves his house and he sees there's no trash. So he asks, where is our fellow Jewish friend? How come he's not here today and we don't see his trash here? So the Prophet Muhammad was told that he's ill, he's sick. He said, let's go and visit him. He goes to his house and he visits him. Now initially, that Jewish guy thought Muhammad came to seek revenge. Every day I'm throwing my trash in front of his door and now that I'm sick, he came here to teach me a good lesson. The Prophet Muhammad sought permission to enter his house. He sat by him and he told him, God teaches me to visit the sick. And I didn't see you around, so I asked where you were and I was told that you were ill. I'm here to visit you. You see the lens through which he used to see other people? It wasn't so significant that this person is Muslim, Jewish, Christian. What was important in the eyes of the Prophet Muhammad is he's a fellow human being and I ought to take care of him. 
And he was so concerned with the dignity of human beings. One day, a man comes to him. He was in the mosque. He said, I am poor. Can you give me some money? The Prophet Muhammad was poor. He didn't have much money. He said, okay, wait. Let me go in my house and see what I can bring for you. He gives him something humble, maybe a loaf of bread, something very simple because that's all he had in his house. The man belittled it. So in front of everyone, he said, that's all you give me? I am not satisfied. It's a shame that I only get this from you. The Prophet Muhammad didn't say anything, but his companions were disturbed. He did good to you. That's all he had in his house. And you insult him? So they started talking negatively about him. Rumors were spreading. People were gossiping. This shameless man. Did you hear what he did today at mosque? The Prophet Muhammad was disturbed. Because now the dignity of a human being was being compromised. People were speaking of that man negatively. He did not want that to happen. So the Prophet Muhammad gathers some money, he raises some funds for him. Next day, he gives him something better. He tells him, are you satisfied now? He said, yes, now I'm satisfied. Then the Prophet Muhammad said, come to the mosque. I want you to speak to my companions and tell them that now you are satisfied because they are seeing you negatively because of what you did yesterday. And I don't want anyone to see you negatively because your dignity is our dignity. And he came to the mosque and he cleared up what he had done the day before. And everyone now saw him positively. He paid so much attention to human dignity. It really disturbed him if even a single person in his society was viewed negatively by other people. And that's the spirit of the Prophet Muhammad. He saw everyone from the lens of humanity. You know, in those early Muslims in Mecca were being persecuted by the idol-worshipping pagans. The persecution got very bad. Those early Muslims would be tortured day and night, and the Prophet Muhammad would tell them to be patient. But when it got unbearable, you know what he did? He told them, I have a plan for you. There is a just ruler in Abyssinia, modern-day Ethiopia. His name is the Nagus. He's a Christian king. Go there and ask him for protection. The companions of Muhammad were surprised. You're telling us to go to the government of a Christian king and live in a Christian society? The prophet Muhammad said, yes, because I've heard that this king is a just king and there is justice there. And I want my Muslim followers to go and seek protection there. Because we are all human beings and we are working for justice. Can you believe that? Prophet Muhammad asked his followers to go and live in a Christian community. Because he realized that they were establishing justice and he honored that justice. One of the most beautiful statements of the Prophet Muhammad is one I'd like to share with you. When you think sometimes, who is the closest person to God? We all sometimes have this question. How does God see me? How does God view me? How close am I to the Almighty God? The Prophet Muhammad used to teach that all people are the dependents of God. He did not say Muslims. He did not say people who have faith or even believe in God. He said all people, all the creation of God, they are the dependents of God. They are like the family of God. The most beloved amongst you in the eyes of God is the one who benefits his family most. The one who benefits his family most. Think about that. If I want to see where I stand with God, how much have I served other fellow human beings? Prophet Muhammad used to teach that's what will determine how close you are to the Almighty God. And if we just take these words, my beloved friends, and we implement them in our everyday lives, what a great world we would be in. I remember I had a friend. He had some issue with one of his friends. His friend became very successful. 
So he started to grow jealous of his friend. He could not stand why his friend was so successful. He had a wonderful business going on, wonderful family, people respecting him in society, and he really was growing jealous. So one day I sensed that jealousy was burning inside his heart. I told him, I have one question to ask you. You love God, don't you? He's like, yes, of course, I worship God, I love God. I told him that friend that you're jealous of, who gave him what he has? Who enabled him to be successful? All the blessings that he has, where did he get them from? He thought for a moment and he said, God, God gave him. I told him, if you love God, you will love the work of God as well. And you will love what God gave to other people. He thought about it for a moment. He said, that statement healed my heart. I just realized that. I never saw it that way. Indeed, he's a servant of God. He is a creation of God. And God gave him. If I love God, I will love what he does. If I love the Almighty God, I will love other fellow human beings. Because in the end, who created them? In the end, who blessed them? It's the Almighty God. And so the closer I get to God, the more I start serving others in my society. This is the legacy of the Prophet Muhammad, my dear friends. But we Muslims, we also seek inspiration from Jesus, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad has inspired today more than 1.5 billion Muslims to love and respect Jesus. You would be surprised at the number of religious scriptures and traditions that we have about Jesus, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad would commonly speak about Jesus, the achievements of Jesus, the sayings of Jesus. I would like to share with you a couple of statements by Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, as found in our scriptures. And it shows you that Jesus also saw people from the lens of humanity. And he broke all these superficial barriers that we create in society. Prophet Jesus, in one beautiful quote that you will find in our Islamic scriptures, he used to say, blessed are those and destined to happiness are those who have mercy on one another. Because on the day of judgment, God will have so much mercy on them. Blessed are those who make peace between people. He did not say between Jews, Christians, the followers of the Abrahamic faiths. He said, blessed are those who make peace between people. Anytime you make peace between people, then you are blessed in the eyes of Jesus, son of Mary. And then he has a very beautiful statement. He says, when you're on your path to make peace between people, there are people who will attack you, people who will bring you down, people who will slander you, but walk in the path of God. That's how you find the strength. Now I'll share with you the second beautiful teaching that we take from Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. And indeed, it's very, very inspiring. It's one that I truly love. And I believe if the world just sees other people from the lens that Jesus used to see others, we'd have an oasis of peace today in the world. Jesus, peace be upon him, used to preach the following statement. It's fascinating. I'd like to share it with you. He used to say, don't just be good with your relatives, with people who follow your faith tradition. Be good to everyone out there in society. Because when you see the sun when it rises, look at the beautiful analogy that he gives us. When you see the sun rising, the sun that God created, does the sun discriminate and say today I will shine just on the believer or just on the Jew or the Christian or the Muslim or the pious one? Or the sun shines on everyone, even the sinful ones, even the wrongdoers, even those who don't share your faith tradition. The sun shines on them all. And that's the sun God created for human beings. And so let your generosity and 
goodness include everyone in society. And then he also said, and when you've seen the rain fall, we've been having quite a lot of rain last few days, right? Have you seen the rain falling down? Does the rain discriminate and say, I am going to fall down on this house because this person follows this faith and not that house or on this race, not on that race. Prophet Jesus says, see the work of God. Look at the sun God created. Look at the rain when it comes down. When it comes down, it comes down on everyone because they're all human beings who are created by the Almighty God. And that's the beautiful lens that he gives us to see the world. My dear friends, today if we, Muslims and Christians, and we comprise more than half of the global population, if we take these teachings from Jesus and Muhammad, and we are true to this message, what kind of world do you think we will be experiencing and living in? You know, sometimes when people talk about religion, I've heard a lot of people say, the problem today is because there are too many religious people. Religion is a problem. We have too much religion. My dear friends, my perspective on that is we have too little religion. Because if we take these messages from the Prophet Muhammad and Jesus and we're true to them, and that's what religion really is, the world would be a much better place. We need more religiosity in this sense, not less. If we can come together as one community, my dear friends, imagine the example that we can give to the future generations. I know some families today are looking at the future and they're concerned. What kind of society will my children live in? What will the world be like? There is so much racism today. Racism is rampant. Bigotry is rampant. But my dear friends, we can make a difference. Because what I learned from the work of God is that if you are sincere on the path of God, God is with you and he will give you power. Look at Jesus and Muhammad. From which backgrounds did they come from? Prophet Muhammad was born an orphan. He never even met his father. He was six when his mother died. He grew up an orphan and poor. But today over 1.5 billion people follow him. Jesus, peace be upon him, he came from very humble backgrounds. But look at the world today. Are the followers of Jesus and Muhammad confined to that region where they came from? Look at the Christian world today. Are they from the Palestine area, from Jerusalem, from the Middle East? Most Christians are not from the Middle East. And similarly, the majority of Muslims are not from the Middle East. They are not Arabs. Only 20% of Muslims are Arabs, and 80% are not Arab. Why is that, my dear friends? Because these two great leaders of humanity broke these barriers, even though they really did not have much. They did not have a kingdom. They did not have massive wealth, but they stayed true to the path of God, and the Almighty God blessed their work. And if we do the same, we will leave a wonderful impact for the future generations, my dear friends. It has been a great honor and privilege today to be with you. And I honestly don't consider myself a guest here at BUC. I feel this is my home. This is my third or fourth time visiting you. And it's always a wonderful experience. I ask the Almighty God to bless you all, to protect you, to bless the wonderful work that you're doing. And we truly are grateful to the Almighty God for living in such a wonderful country. A country in which we can break these barriers. We can see the common identity that we all have, the identity of humanity. God bless you all. Thank you. I look forward to seeing some of you at the Q&A session where we will have a wonderful discussion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.